Okay, so here we have some flattening filters, MV X-ray flattening filters, and this is the device that's up in the head of the machine that's designed to attenuate a non-flat X-ray beam and turn it flat. So you can see they're cone-shaped. These two are slightly different. This one says 2.5 MV on it. I think this came out of an old Linac. I think this one came out of a newer one. And you can see they're specifically designed. They have a very special shape on them. They're actually sharp. If you were to poke your hand in this, you would actually get punctured and hurt. Um, these two appear to be made out of aluminum. This one appears to be made out of copper. It's denser. It's not as thick, but I think the density of copper is greater than the density of aluminum, so it doesn't have to be as thick. And then by design, the X-ray flattening filters are taking what is an unflat x-ray beam and turning it into a flattened x-ray beam. Which I lost my pen. I have to get a new pen out because I can't find it. So in a MV x-ray beam, so we, when we have an x-ray source up here and the e-beam comes down, produces x-rays. The intensity of the x-ray beam as you go across from one side to the other is differential, right? We have primary collimator on here, and then down below we have the x-ray jaws of this beam. So the jaws are down here. And when we look at the x-ray intensity profile of this type of beam, it may go something like this. I'm gonna to try to draw it with respect to the jaws, and then it's gonna peak up, and then it's gonna peak back down, and like this. So it's got this point on it. And you can see this flattening filter is designed to Attenuate this high intensity x ray in the middle, attenuate less on the end. So, if we were to put a flattening filter in here, this is not where it is actually in the x ray beam, it would take this intensity profile, intensity as a function of x, we'll make x this way, and turn it into something that's more flat. So, it will come up like this, like that, and make uh, unflat beam into a flattened beam like this. I'll call this 100%. So we'll normalize it 100%. So that's what the flattening filter does. Um, the point on it is interesting, right? So these things are pretty darn sharp. And you have to make sure that this point of the beam is pointed right at the point of the x-ray beam. So you have to use beam steering. Usually <clears throat> in previous generations of Linux, this rode on a carousel, it was pinned in place, it rotated into position and stopped. And then you'd have to make sure that this flattening filter was coincident with the x-ray beam. If it was off just a little bit, let's say like it was shifted just a bit, it's gonna attenuate the beam more here, less over here. So an unflat beam would look like this. It would have less attenuation on one side too much on the other, and if we were to stripe a line, we'd know that one side was too high and one side was too low. You'd have to either adjust the position of your flattening filter or adjust the position, here are my pens pretending to be an electron beam on a target, adjust the position of the electron beam on the target. Um, if we look at these two, the flattening filter is specific to the energy of the x-ray source, and so this must be for a higher energy x-ray beam compared to this one because it's thicker and more attenuating and you have to do more attenuation of the x-ray beam to get it flat. Um, another thing about this is, remember from previous lectures, um, when you go through more material, you're attenuating more of the lower energy x-rays. So when this x-ray beam comes down, hits this flattening filter, goes right through this long length, the x-rays that come out the middle are steeped more towards the higher energy spectrum than the lower compared to the ones that are on the outside. Um, so that's another aspect that we have to worry about in physics modeling. And then these days, because we have full VMAP beams, um, you can easily ask the question like, why do we even need this, right? If we're going to do intensity modulation using VMAP, we can simply use the non-flattened beam, right? And this is the flattening filter free flattening filter free mode of the LINAC. And in the flattening filter free mode, this is gone. There's a hole in the carousel. You get this full peaked x-ray beam out of it. It looks something like this. 
that's a bad drawing. And then down below, when you have the MLC um, mitigating the beam down below, it will <clears throat> may pass quickly over here because the beam's nice and intense through the middle and more slowly at the end. And the VMAT and IMRT delivery is essentially modulating the dose coming out of the treatment machine. So in triple F mode, you get much higher dose rate. The flattened beam is a lower dose rate than the unflattened beam. And for triple F mode of the LINAC, you like that nice unflattened beam because um, you get higher dose rate and higher delivery and it produces faster treatments. Um, the converse of that is you may notice the way I've drawn it here, this beam may only be flat over like maybe 20 centimeters of the beam. So it's only good for treatments that will fit within 20 centimeters if we're trying to treat 30 or 40 centimeters of a patient or if the target is off axis and we're treating through this part of it right here, we're not gonna get very high dose rate through it and triple F mode isn't um, very advantageous. So that's what flattening filters are and what they do.